no one is inspired by our perfection. They're inspired by our progression, by watching us progress, watching us grow, watching us fail and get back up. Thank you for tuning in to True Grit and Grace. I'm Amberly Lago, and I am so excited. I have my good friend, Lindsay Schwartz, here with us today. And if y'all have big dreams, um, but if you have a little fear around those dreams, uh, need some clarity, and if you really want to build your confidence, I'm so glad you're here because she is an incredible power house woman. In fact, she's the founder of Powerhouse Women, and she's got a huge event that I actually get to go to. I'm so excited about. Got my VIP ticket. She's an author. She's got a huge podcast. She is a speaker. She speaks all over the world, virtually and in person. She's also an amazing MC. And in fact, she just spoke at my event um, a few weeks ago. And Everybody was dying over what she was sharing, but also I can't tell you how many people were coming up to me and saying, I could not stop staring at her. She's so gorgeous. So if you're not <laughs> watching this on YouTube, you'll have to go to her Instagram page or, and, and just give her a follow so you can see how gorgeous she is. Lindsay, I love you. Aww. Thank you for being here. You just build me up. Every time I'm around you, I just think I, I just walk a little bit taller. I put my shoulders back because- Amberly believes in me. Oh That's my goodness. Well, let's talk about the first time I met you. I think I, I went this across the, the room and I was like, oh my gosh, Lindsay. Cause I'd only known you online and followed yes. you for a long time. And I was so excited to get to share the stage with you. And you had on this gorgeous outfit and I went over and just like squeezed your legs. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, these legs of yours, they're gorgeous. I know how hard you worked for these. They're beautiful. And I was like, oh, Amberly, control yourself. Like, stop <laughs> squeezing her legs. <laughs> and it was love at first leg squeeze because I'm yes. like, look, anyone who, number one, is just bold enough to walk across the room and give a compliment, especially someone from a fitness background who knows that it takes work. I just was in love from, from first leg squeeze. And the rest is history. Here we are. Yes, we had so much fun. And then I had asked you if you would come speak at my event. And I started crying. Y'all, I started crying when she said yes. I was like, oh, oh my gosh, Lindsay Schwartz is going to come speak at my event. And I was so excited. And we had so much fun together. And, you know, you are such an expert at speaking and putting on events. I mean, you have another event coming up and this is your seventh one. And so I really look to you um, for everything that you do. And I've told you this before, if y'all aren't on her email list, get on her email list because the content that you share through your newsletters, uh, through your, just your Instagram alone and your podcast is amazing, but what you have built is incredible. So I'd like to ask you like, so you're the founder of powerhouse women, but how did that come to be? Can you just share with everybody how you started this? Because you're a real, you have a gift for building community. Like you're mm -hmm. an expert community builder. So how did you come to do what you do today? Well, first of all, that's so incredibly generous. And I love sharing the story of how it came to be because I was, I did not see myself as this powerhouse of a woman, did not have a community, didn't really have a following that, that big at all. And I was just this woman who knew she was meant for more. I had some outward success and I always like to say it, it was outward success. It looked really shiny on the outside in a network marketing business that I was in. Um, and I had started that, gosh, I think it's like 12 years ago now is my first little dipping of my toe into entrepreneurship. And what was tricky is now looking back, I can see how, you know, I was giving maybe 70% of my full effort. And that other 30% was this fear of, of really trying something and failing. It was this fear of, 
What would other people think of me if I really went all in and really pursued my dreams? And so what was tricky, and I don't know if some of you listening can relate to this, but I I think I've always known that I I have really, I have a lot of potential in me. I just kind of always, always knew that there was something really great inside of me. And what was tricky is I could operate at that 70% and I could get results that looked to other people like, oh, wow, she's crushing it. But when you know you're not operating at your full potential mm-hmm. and you're not, and that doesn't mean perfection. I'm not saying a hundred percent means I'm always perfect. It means I'm willing to try and fail. It means I'm willing to put myself out there and risk being judged or being criticized. And I would operate within this comfy little realm of what I could control. And over time, I started to feel really restless. And I just was like, what is going on? Like I've got, I have these speaking opportunities within my company. I've, I've had some success. You know, I was able to, to build a pretty successful business and, and so were you surface, doing speaking through that business a little bit? Yeah. I got like some opportunities to speak on stage. You know, the things that we could look at the outward picture of someone's life and be like, wow, she's made it. But because down, those network marketing, uh, are mm-hmm. huge. Like, right. I have never been to a big one in person, but I've seen what, and there's thousands of people. Yes. And it's, and it was a, such an amazing training ground for, you know, a lot of the skills that I have now, but I couldn't figure out why I still felt so restless. And the truth was it was, it was cause I was not challenging myself. I wasn't really growing and then came this opportunity. Someone approached me to join a program that they were putting on. So this was a program I had to pay for. It wasn't me being discovered as this famous author. Someone approached me and said, Hey, I'm putting together kind of this little mastermind group for entrepreneurs who want to get their message out in the form of a book. And she said to me, you should, you know, this would be a really great tool to establish yourself as a, an expert in health and fitness. Cause that's what I was building my brand around much like you. I had this fitness background. I was doing competitions. I was doing, really? you know, I didn't know I was, that you did competition. <laughs> I was building these, these legs of mine and, you know, it was great, but I, I think I, I did it even the competitions a little bit more as like a personal goal for myself. And I got mm-hmm. to a point where I was like, I don't think this is it. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is what I want to do. And so in this conversation with the woman, I remember so clearly saying to her, thank you so much. I'm not going to write a book, but if I did, and it was kind of like opening that little door of possibility that, that had me share something I'd never said out loud before. And here's what I told her. I said, you know, every single day I'm talking to women about their big dreams you know, and I'm talking to them in the context of like seeing if what I'm doing in this team I'm building in network marketing is a fit for them. And the conversation almost always goes something like this. Lindsay, I'm so inspired by what you've done. I totally see your success. I I think it's so great. I don't think that's for me, meaning I don't think I want to do the same kind of business that you're doing, but I've always had this other idea. Mm. almost to a fault, Amberly, people would pour their hearts out to me, would share this like inspiration. Either they had a specific idea or they just knew they wanted to to do something more. And I always joke, this is why I never went to like the tippy top of network marketing because I'd be like, yeah, forget about this other thing. Tell me about this idea. I would be like, yeah, forget, forget this other thing. Tell me more because they would just light up at sharing with me this big vision that they had or just even just this feeling that they were meant for more. And without fail in the next breath, almost every single time, they would start to share why they weren't ready, why they didn't know enough people. They didn't have what it takes. They had fear. And every time I kind of sat back and I was like, wait a minute, did no one tell you? Oh, here's the secret. Yeah. None of us know what we're doing. Yeah. We're really just figuring this out as we go. Right. And so (laughs) none of us know what we're doing. We're just figuring. And I don't. I probably should have things figured out a little bit more before I maybe jump into we them. should, but I, I also, but love I just that jump into them. I love jumping. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time that I had ever said that out loud. And she said, well, Lindsay, if you don't write that book, who's going to. And the first thing I wanted to do was open my mouth and tell her why I wasn't a writer, mm-hmm. why I had a lot of fear around putting myself out there. And I heard it. I heard in that moment, okay, if I'm really about this message, if I really want to help women have these breakthroughs, and if I really wanted to go get over like this paralyzing self-doubt that I had, 
I really wish I could transport people back to how I felt inside at that time. This was only about six or seven years ago and realize that like the, the growth that I've had and the, the, you know, the stage people see me on now and the community I've built, it came from saying yes to that first really scary thing that I didn't know I had any business doing. So I, I ended up writing the book. I called it powerhouse woman. And I literally did this little event just to celebrate the book launch. Cause my publisher said, you should do a book launch event. And I said, okay, well, I guess the book is called powerhouse woman. Okay. We'll call it powerhouse women. And I had this little half day event. I was just telling you, cause I was like, I wish you could see what I see when I look at the future of what your event is going to turn into. Cause that version of me had no idea that that little event would turn into this global community of women and these, these events that, you know, are now six, 700 people and, you know, this entire business that was inspired by it. But I really wish more than anything, what I want people to know, and I can tell you stories on stories of just how messy and imperfect and not very powerhouse the beginning of that journey was and still is. Like some of my favorite moments are the moments where I don't feel like a powerhouse at all. And I still show up and I do the thing that scares me because I think if, if early Lindsay could have seen that, I think she would have gotten into action a whole lot faster. Mm. Well, one of the things I really love about you is of the many things I love about you is you are so, so despite your like luminous success, you're so humble and down to earth and willing to help others. I mean, even y'all, even before we started recording, we were talking and I'm like, oh my goodness, I know we, we got a, a podcast to record. Let's get, let's push record. But you were helping me because you were asking me if I'd had a chance to debrief my event and stuff. And, and I said a little, but boy, there's so many things that I learned even with that first event. And I watch what you do and the success you've had. And you're like, oh, when you first did your very first event, it was about the size of mine. So that gives me hope that it will grow into more of a global thing where so many people will be able to come and attend. So thank you for that. And thank you for sharing that like, you know, sometimes you don't always feel like some powerhouse woman that there, cause that's normal. I think all of us sometimes feel like we've had our, the confidence kind of knocked right out of us, or I get ner I get nervous still about some things that I'm, I'm going to do. I mean, I have this one event that I'm speaking at and I'm speaking, they want a pre-record, they want it pre-recorded. Which for me, I mean, I didn't even own a computer six years ago and it's still kind of scary for me to just like look into the little black dark circle yes. to can instead of looking at someone else. And so I get so much fear and then I'm like, I have to talk to myself and say, this isn't about me. It's not about me. It's about who can I serve? Who's mm. out there that I can serve? But do you still get nervous sometimes before you go to speak? Oh, uh, 100% stage? I do. It, it is, it's an interesting sensation because it's this knowing that one of the places I feel most me is getting to be on a stage. And it's, I think it's the connection with the people in the room that actually makes me feel that way. It's knowing that the more I'm willing to just be authentic about all of my failures and all the things that I've done wrong, it'll, it'll send someone in that room out to maybe go do that next brave thing. I just think there's nothing cooler. And I still get incredibly nervous and I get the butterflies and I don't think I would ever want them to go away. Cause it tells me, it reminds me how important it is to me. It just reminds me like what a gift it is that I've literally prayed for opportunities like this. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the butterflies. Mine are more like pterodactyls. Like they've got really, really big wings, but I think I've also learned just some tools, you know, just even like breathing techniques or visualization or, you know, rem reminding myself that it's not about me. It literally is about who it's going to help in that audience. So even if the worst case scenario happened, who knows what that even could be, right? I forget what I was going to say, or I fall on my face. I, one of my gifts is that I actually don't take myself that seriously. So I could make anything part of the lesson. And I think it just really frees me to know that the nerves are normal, 
but also that I think people have been leaning into this, um, just this quote recently that I've been repeating over and over that no one is inspired by our perfection. They're inspired by our progression, by watching us progress, watching us grow, watching us fail and get back up. And, you know, just being intentional with sharing more of that with my audience as well, because it's so, I know that I do it too. I'll look at someone who has this incredible business that I admire and my mind makes up this lie that like they don't struggle or they don't have their failures or their days where they just don't feel like showing up or things are really hard. And that's, that's just not true. We all have that stuff going on and I'm, I'm being more mindful of, of talking about it in the moment because it's so real. And it, I think what sets apart the people who are then creating results anyway, is that they still have that stuff. You still have your stuff, more opportunities to practice grit than anyone I know. And you show up and you do it anyway. And watching women like you is what inspires me. Oh, I thank you. And I, I love that. And I, I agree. People aren't inspired by perfection. And I think perfection is actually kind of boring. Like when we know (laughs) that it took a lot to, uh, to get somewhere that somebody has put in the work that they've put in the prayers and, 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 but even like before we started recording, we were talking and I was like, yeah, man, I got back home from my event and my husband had just gotten out of surgery. And then I lost, you know, my dad passed away and I've been dealing with that. And I think one of the things that helps me get through those moments is to get back up is connection. Mm -hmm. Um, I I told you, I was really looking forward to getting to talk with you um, and having that sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. But what would you say to somebody who is having trouble building those connections um, and they really want a community And they want to be a part of something and they really just want to be seen and heard and understood. What would you say to that person to to start building connections and community? Yeah. Well, and I think this is one of the reasons why both of us really love coordinating and hosting events and creating environments where someone could come, even if they're showing up alone and even just with a little courage to step into that room and introduce yourself and say hi to a few people, that's how it starts. So Mm -hmm. we all started somewhere. I am actually more introverted than I think people would imagine. I've grown a lot of skills now where I know how to support myself through that, but I started off this journey with a lot of social anxiety. It really, Really? it it really took everything in me to walk into a room where I didn't know anyone, but I also knew that because it scared me so much or it felt so uncomfortable, I was going to grow in the process. So I think just reminding ourselves, whatever you think is holding you back from building those relationships, you can find your own authentic way to still make moves in that direction. Right. Because at the end of the day, what I always tell my community is, you know, if you want to create those kind of aligned connections, those type of people are not going to show up on your doorstep. They're not Mm going to say, you know, we heard you're looking to make some like-minded friends. We just thought we'd stop by Mm -hmm. and invite you to lunch. You know, it takes, it takes courage. And I think it does. It takes a lot of courage, so much courage. And knowing that on the other side of that courage, that people do want to connect with you. I think you've got to also look at where do you have some beliefs? What do you find yourself saying out loud that maybe is an indication of some beliefs that are keeping you from making those connections? Is it that you believe certain things about, oh, women are only like this, they're only competitive or they're this or that? Not in my world, not in not yours. Not in my world at all. You know? and, and I think it's because we now believe And we know that there are great, very collaborative minded people out there. So what are the beliefs that you have to maybe just take a quick look at? Because if, if your belief is that people are such and such way, you're more likely to see evidence of that than of maybe the kind of spirit and the kind of personality you want to connect with. But then it does take courage. It does take courage to put yourself in environments where just ask like, well, where do those type of people hang out? 
And if you're looking to connect with really ambitious people, people up to something, people who are positive and, you know, even in the face of their challenges, events like yours, events like Powerhouse Women. I mean, that was really where I started to build my network. And I, you know, at the beginning of this journey, I had moved to Arizona from Wisconsin, where I'm originally from and started fresh. I did not know a soul. So I know it's really easy for people to see the community that's been cultivated here and they, or they'll see, you know, the friends that I have now. And that was over years of doing everything that I just said, being willing to go. And I went on so many like friendship blind dates that just didn't turn out where you were like, oh, wow, that is not a connection that I want to cultivate more. And that's what it really looks like. Just like building your business is just consistency over time, building connections and the, and the kind of collaborative relationships that you want is built over time. And then having the guts like you did, maybe don't go up and grab someone's leg in every situation. I mean, there's some people that that would really work for, but you had the courage and and we had the courage to go up and connect with each other. Cause I was just as excited to meet you at that event. I was so excited because we had connected online, but to get to meet you in real life and, and we can all make up our own stories about, oh, that person's like too much of a big deal for me, or they would never want to connect with me. So having the courage to make a real human connection anyway, and then notice where you feel and you feel like you're being drawn in more, mm -hmm. knowing that you're not actually meant to connect with everyone in a deep way. And you'll find like when you and I met, it was like, there was that spark of friendship. It was like, yes, this is the type of person I want to surround myself with. And in such a short time of you and I knowing each other, now I consider you someone who I would call when I'm having a tough time or, and, and I have people who've been in my life decades and, and I wouldn't necessarily think to call them first. So it really is this combination of understanding. It takes the courage, pay attention to where like your energy is really drawn to someone and where you feel that being reciprocated. But you know, at the end of the day, you only have so much bandwidth for so many of those like deep connections. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if it's not a fit with one person, because it'll be a fit with another. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I love that you say it takes courage. And, and I mean, whether you're walking into a business event or a networking event, or I remember the first time I went to an a, all women, it was a recovery meeting for women and I needed to get sober. And I had so much shame about here. I was this fitness professional. Then I turned into being an alcoholic, having a drinking problem. It was like, oh my goodness. I had so much shame. And guess what? Though every single woman in that room had the same problem. Like they were all dealing with the same thing. And I remember walking in and, and, and being so scared, my hands were trembling and I actually sat on my hands. So people wouldn't see my hands shaking. And when I started to just open up a little bit and hear other women open up and realize that we had so much in common, it was like, Oh, wow. I'm not alone in this. She mm -hmm. feels like this. She feels like this. She and, and I built friendships in that room that I still have to this day. Yeah. And, and if you really want to, so whether you're getting sober, whether, and you need some sober friends or whether you want to build your business and you want to be around some powerhouse women, you guys, I don't know if you have seen the kind of events that Lindsay does, but if you just check out her Instagram I was like, oh my gosh, yes, these are the women that I want to be around. They're like badass boss, babe, powerhouse women. I was like, I want to get my fancy new clothes and go to that event. But because, but then I love that you have a pajama party the night before. I want to know about that. Yeah. That's, that's for and the VIP though, right? Yeah, it comes with the VIP ticket. And I want to speak to that a little bit because I was even just talking with a friend earlier who attended last year for the first time. And I hear this quite a bit and I, I want to speak to it because it's also easy for someone to look at the, especially the videos that we share. It's like these high energy moments and these people who seem like, oh, they have no problem at all jumping up on stage. That's and dancing true. And that's true. And 
what's what's so true is that I am not naturally that person. So I want to speak to those who would tend to keep themselves out of an environment like that, thinking that you don't belong, thinking that, oh, I really like that. I aspire to be like that, but ooh, I, maybe in a couple of years, I'll have the confidence. Or it's, you see all these women in, you know, fashionable outfits. Like it's something we actually intentionally make a part of our, the event conversation is we encourage people to dress in a way that brings your highest self to the room. You know, what's that outfit that you really have no, no excuse to wear anywhere else. This is a room where it's totally safe to be your most self-expressed version, whether that's being in the most comfy lounge set and that's your vibe, or if it's something that is a little bit more dressed up, we create the environment that really, it, it is an invitation. It's an invitation for your highest self to show up. So you can practice embodying that spirit that day and be around other people who are doing the same, but also balancing it with this, this started as really a joke that I said, if I'm going to do add on a, a Friday night kickoff party, I'll only do it if I can show up in my pajamas because again, introvert over here, like much more introverted. I actually require a lot of time alone to prepare for events like this. I just really mm -hmm. have to manage my energy. And so it started as a joke, but then I said, well, wait a minute. You know, I know that something that is, is, can be really intimidating is walking into a room full of powerful women. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, I don't want to lower that bar because I also know that when you take that courageous step, especially if it's uncomfortable for you, the growth that you're going to experience is just going to be tremendous. So we don't want to, we don't want to say that, you know, encourage people to be less powerful so that others don't feel intimidated. No, we want to encourage everyone to show up as their most powerful self Saturday. But what if we just have everyone show up in their pajamas on Friday night? Because yes, it still can feel intimidating walking into a room of people you don't know. But when everyone's in like their fuzzy slippers and it's, you know, there's fun music and we do, you know, there's like some snacks and some, you know, some drinks and just a very casual environment that makes it a little bit less intimidating to connect. And that way you meet some some friendly faces and you walk in on Saturday, at least knowing one or two people that maybe you didn't know the night before. And it makes the whole experience, again, the whole intention is to get people to take that courageous step and just discover what's waiting for them when they step into this identity of that we're really creating the, this movement around that, you know, I believe that we all are a powerhouse. That's that's innately within you. You don't have to become more or be more or be more impressive or being a, be wearing a more fashionable outfit to call yourself a powerhouse. That is who you are. It is mm -hmm. literally woven into your DNA. You are a creator. You are here to do big things. And we want to create the environment that very much calls out that part of you. So the whole day and experience is very intentional to allow people to experience maybe for the first time ever, like their full power. And I know that wow. that can feel intimidating. It, it is for me even, you know, I, I tap into something new for myself that day. And I know how incredibly powerful that's been for the growth of my vision and the growth of my business is as I keep leveling up and putting myself into uncomfortable positions that help me grow my business almost grows as a default. I don't even have to really think about that. So the whole experience in that way is, is really intentional, but I really wanted to say that to the people who feel or, or see events like mine or yours and think, gosh, I just don't know if I belong in that room because it's usually the, that person that actually stands to gain the most from that first courageous step just to put themselves in that environment. Yeah. And that is something that I wish people, it's like, I wish everybody knew, like, if you just get in the room, it can change the tra trajectory of your career. It can change the shift your perspective. It can change um, the way you feel about yourself, change your belief system, build your confidence, the connections you make when you get in a room, you make lifelong friends and you never know how one conversation mm -hmm. or one moment or one thing that you hear from one of the speakers, or maybe it's in the bathroom 
talking right. to someone in the bathroom right. that just changes everything, whether it's mm -hmm. like you meet someone and y'all do a podcast swap or you meet someone and you decide to do a business together. I, you know, there's just so many amazing things that come out of just getting in the room. And I love that you do the pajama party the night before. Now, do you wear your own pajamas or do you, are there matching pajamas or does everybody just wear their own pajamas? That is such a great question. It, what the joke is typically that I don't think any of us wear the actual pajamas that we sleep in because I don't know about you, but mine are not cute. Mine is like mine are just the reason that's the reason I was asking because <laughs> I'm it's, like, I need to go get some pajamas because yeah. let me tell you what I sleep in. Like my it's husband, not, my husband's like, are you like, you look homeless. Yes. That's, that's my sleep vibe as well. So no, I don't wear my actual pajamas. It's always a fun excuse to go and get something that is a little bit more fashionable. If I were like, this is my fashionable sleep attire. Um, but the, the goal is that it's just this dressed down environment. So whatever's mm -hmm. cozy for you, some people show up in their yoga pants. Some, some people like go and get the fun pajamas. We had a, actually my mastermind group last year, all coordinated and they came in matching pajamas, but it's the goal is just for it to feel very dressed down, very cozy, comfortable. And if you need an excuse to buy cute pajamas, this is, you can use this as an excuse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, I need some, I really need to go to like Victoria's secret maybe and get some cute pajamas and a new robe too. It will probably both be targeted with so many pajama ads now that we've been talking about this. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> I need some pajamas. If you're listening to this, no. <laughs> <laughs> So true. So true. Well, this, this is so exciting. So, okay. I'm sorry. I just want more details about the event. Oh, I'm I like, this is my get... favorite thing to talk about. Okay. Ask good, away. good, good. Well, I mean, I, and you guys, if you could see us, like when we're not recording, I, there's so many questions I ask her about, okay. I love the way that you started promoting the pre-sale of your tickets. Like you were starting to launch the the ticket sales, then you, I mean, it's, I love the whole process that you do for your event and that you launch it so far out. I, that was a mistake I made. I, I gave myself about a month. It's which, listen, I have learned so much, so much over the years. That's what I was telling you. I was like, let me, let me download all of my event lessons to you so that we can help you just speed through the process a little bit faster. But you know, I think for, for me, I, it starts to feel real the moment people start to like buy their tickets and, and get them. I think my first event I did only promote for like six weeks. So exact same as you. And okay. now it's like, it's, we literally build our year around it. So even our community, even though we do open up tickets about six months before they're in our inbox, like when are tickets going on sale? When are they going on sale? Cause we've created such, such a community around this event and it's so fun to see. And I think it's, it's even just the reminder that like, when we talk about putting yourself in the room, that transformation actually happens the moment you secure your ticket for it. The moment you book that flight or you buy that outfit, you're already starting to live into this future that you want to create for yourself. So yeah, if you host events, it's something that has worked really, really well for us. In fact, I'll do a whole episode on my podcast about like what has worked for us and helped us to really grow our, you know, our ticket sales and really fill these events with amazing people. But I want to speak again to those of you that are, are knowing that you're craving some expansion this year and starting to think, gosh, maybe an event is, is part of that expansion. I do believe that the, the transformation starts the moment that you register and you get your ticket. And yeah, in powerhouse women, we, a friend joked, she said, I am on the powerhouse women lunar calendar, meaning our new year starts at the powerhouse women event. That's like our new year's Eve is a thing of the past. Our new year's Eve is the powerhouse women <laughs> event. And then we really get to come back every year and notice, wow, look how much I've grown. Look how much my business has grown or look at these new connections that I've made. And I'm mm -hmm. so excited for that to happen with your event too. It's like, as you, as the people who've attended in the past come back, they get to witness their own growth and transformation because they have this timestamp to reflect back on who they were last year when they attended and really get to acknowledge their own expansion over, you know, the 
12 or so months since that time. Yeah. And you know what? I'm so glad that you, you mentioned that the transformation starts when you get the ticket, because, you know, that's, that's the thing too, is like, getting in the room, you know, I host my own events. I, I mean, I host my own mastermind events and then I just did this bigger event, but I still go to events. So mm, I still same. invest in myself and go to events, especially when I have a friend who is having an event, I go and buy the ticket, you know, sometimes even if I can't go to their event, I still go and buy the ticket just because I want to support them. And, and then I'm like, try to figure out a way to get to their event. Um, and so I think it's really important too, for in building those connections. And that's something that I think a lot of people don't understand, especially when they, they think they reach a certain level and then they don't need to go to any events or do any of that, that they should just be in, invited or just be able to go for free or what it's like, yeah. no, you need to get the ticket and support your friend. That's mm -hmm. what I have to say. Mm -hmm. I like, know I, it was actually at an event that I heard Jamie Kern Lima talk about this. And she, you know, she has this company that she sold for a billion dollars. And, and she was even talking about how she'll get friends or family asking her for like free product and stuff like that. And she said, listen, like as, as soon as you're able to start paying full price for your friend's stuff for their event tickets, for their, and it, it's, it is, it's just this beautiful way that I think we, we can keep ourselves in the, the humble spirit of always being a student. I think that the person who's always willing to be a student makes the best leader. Those are the people I want to learn from. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think that that's awesome. Was, did you hear Jamie Kern Lima say that at Candy's event? Was it at her? It wasn't at hers. Cause I missed that day. It oh, that's right. Event. You missed it too. I was so I bummed. No, I, I saw her speak at a couple of other events though. She's phenomenal. Just in such a, what an example of someone who's just always willing to show up and serve, you know? So it's that it's realizing that it doesn't matter how, how long you and I have been in this game. I always learn something when I put myself in an event and, and get to learn from even someone who's just starting out. Are you kidding? I learn the most from people who are newer in the journey, who have different ideas than me, who aren't as stuck in the way of like, oh, this is how it has to go. Uh, I think when we maintain that spirit, we actually, we put ourselves in a position to be better leaders. Yeah, for sure. Well, tell everybody exactly when the event is and how they can get a ticket to come hang out with us. Yeah. If you want to come and be friends with us, come and grab either one of our legs. Just yeah. that's how we'll know. <laughs> that's how we'll know that you found out on this podcast is you don't have to say a word, just come up and like latch onto one of our calves and we'll know <laughs> that'll be the international sign that I'm part of the Lindsay and Amberly um, club. So the event is in, in Scottsdale, Arizona, August 25th and 26th. It is um, such an, an amazing day of connection and expansion. We have amazing speakers and really it's just- Oh yeah, I was going to ask you, who to... are the speakers? Oh, okay. So this year we have, we haven't announced all of them, but we have Amy Porterfield is coming. We have oh, um, Ronnie Brown, who's like, oh, this woman just inspires me just the way she shows up in the world. Um, Ronnie Brown is the, she's the founder of girl CEO and she's got a, a product line. She's just incredible. Does she make and jewelry? She doesn't No, no. Maybe okay. you're thinking of, so the other person who is coming is Leah Valencia key. Oh, who is has she? a beautiful jewelry line. She's, I um, love her just such a, literally a ray of sunshine. And then my good friend, Jen Gottlieb is coming as well. Oh, and I know so, Jen as well. She's on, yes. on the podcast. Oh, it's just, I mean, every year I'm like, I can't believe these are the women we get to hang out with. So it's going to be such a fun time. And um, all the details, everything is linked at powerhousewomenevent.com. That's the best place to, to really just get all this, the details. But I, I'm just so grateful to women like you, that you invest and put yourself in rooms like this and that you're willing to invest and put yourself in, in the room that I'm curating because it really is, it's just the coolest thing that this is what we get to do for a living. I, it is not lost on me. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not just deeply grateful that this is, this is what I get to call work. It's just yeah. the coolest. And I'm so grateful to get to do it with women like you. 
Well, I'm grateful that you do this and, you know, really transform people's lives, their business, their self-confidence. And so, yeah, the links for the, the event for Lindsay to find her. So the best way, give us the best way to find you again. Uh, so the event, all the event info is going to be at powerhousewomenevent.com. And then our podcast, our Instagram, pretty much everything is under powerhouse women. So it's not too tough to find. Okay, good, good, good. So, and that, that will be in the show notes. Um, so you can just click that. And if you know what, if you take a screenshot and share it on your social media, you can tag me at Amberly Lago motivation or Lindsay at Lindsay. Schwartz. And when I see that I repost it in my story, I just like to know that, that you heard the show yeah. and I appreciate you listening in. And um, if you're coming to the event in August, yeah, just come up and squeeze our leg and we'll know that you heard this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, you have a sense of humor like ours. Yes. Yes, for sure. Well, one of the things that I love about you too, is you, you and I have fun. Like on stage, we were like, we're going to pass the baton. Like, like the, the mic. We did it like, like in slow motion, like when you're seeing a relay race and they like slowly reach back and pass it to the next runner. Oh, we just had, we were so amused by ourselves. We were, I don't know if anybody <laughs> else, you know what? I did see some people posting that on their reels actually on social media. That is true. So we, yep. That's how we find our people. The ones who have sense of humor like us. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Well, I hope I get to so see you much. before August, but um, if I don't, I'll for sure see you then. And you guys, thank you so much for listening in to the podcast. I appreciate you listening and downloading this and sharing it with your friends. You're the one who has made this a top 1% podcast. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.